Today we've got a bunch of the most popular keychain flashlights and we're going to be performing a variety of torture tests to find out which ones are the toughest. The lights we've got for this test are a few from Rovi Vaughn, including the Aurora A5 and the Angel Eyes, the Tiny 2, TIPSC, and Tiki GITD from Nightcore, the Lumintop Frog, the Olight I1R2 Pro, and the Phoenix E03R. But before we dive in, be sure to smash the thumbs up button and let us know down below which brand you think will hold up best. We're going to start off with a freezing test and to do this, we're going to turn the lights on to their lowest output settings. And this test will help us determine a few different things, including how well these lights can handle being submerged in water, if they can handle being submerged for a few hours, and whether or not they can operate in freezing temperatures. Now that the lights have all been frozen, we're going to free them up from the ice and take a look at each one to make sure that they're all working. Upon inspection, it looks like all of the lights in the lineup actually passed this test and remain on for the duration of the freeze and are fully functional and the different output modes are working and I did expect most of the lights to hold up in this challenge. Next we're going to heat things up and push these lights towards the opposite end of the temperature scales and we'll keep them on their moonlight modes and submerge them in super hot water and again we'll be testing their submersion capabilities and also exploring the temperature ranges at which these lights can operate and also seeing if being exposed to high temperatures causes any catastrophic failures. Now these lights are nice and toasty and we're getting a temperature reading of around 170 degrees Fahrenheit or about 77 degrees Celsius and we'll leave them in here for a few minutes and then we're going to add some cool water before pulling them out to take a look. All of these lights are still on and operational but one issue I did notice is an issue with the TIPSE and if you look closely you can see that the backlit side switch appears to be malfunctioning and the light is glowing green to indicate a full charge which is only supposed to happen when it's connected to a charger however it's still working and I'll keep an eye on it and also keep it in the running for the time being but all the other lights are still functioning and holding up really well now we're going to be heating things up even more and for this test we're going to be drenching them in lighter fluid and lighting them on fire. This test is gonna be particularly interesting for the polycarbonate body lights that have silicone switches and charging port covers. So we'll see if those melt or get any damage. And I'm also a little bit worried about those that have TAR lenses made of plastic, which might also melt. So this experiment should be a lot of fun, but a bit dangerous because it's a terrible idea to expose lithium batteries to heat. So I did have a fire extinguisher close by. After the fire went out, I took another temperature check and many of the lights were really hot. And now we'll do another inspection. And the first issue I noticed is with the Rovivon Aurora A5 and the transparent glow in the dark polycarbonate body melted quite a bit. And I really thought this light might explode, but it's still fully functional, which is really impressive. The Night Cortiki's body also melted, but it's still fully functional. So big thumbs up to them, as well as the body of the Rovivon the angel eyes which also melted a little and the light did turn off but i was able to turn it back on and all of the rest of the lights held up exceptionally well and were fully operational after the fire test now we're going to switch things up with an impact test and we're going to start with a two meter drop which is probably the max height you'd be likely to encounter on a daily basis and we're going to do our best to drop them on their bezels to see whether or not their bezels will dent or their lenses will crack since these lights are pretty lightweight i expect they will hold up well but we'll see all right, so let's take a look at these lights and the Nightcore Tiny 2 is looking good and I can't really see a point of impact, but I did notice a lot of moisture in the LED screen, which was most likely a result of the previous immersion test, but overall it's working just fine. The Frog has the smallest dent on the bezel. The Phoenix E03R is a bit scratched up, but I have also carried this light quite a bit, so overall it does look pretty good. The Night Cortiki has no visible damage from the impact. The Rovivon A5 also held up pretty well. The TIPSE also has no visible damage. The Rovivon has a small dent on the bezel. And I also noticed that the AAA indicator light is malfunctioning. So there's definitely some issues going on, most likely as a result of the moisture, but it's still working. So we'll continue to keep a close eye on that. And finally, the Olight also has a really small dent on the bezel, but it's working just fine. The last test we're going to do is a drive over test and I waited another week to perform this one and basically we're just going to drive over each light one at a time to see if they can handle the extreme weight and pressure of a vehicle and we're going to be performing the drive over in my Toyota 4Runner and this will really put the build quality of these lights to the test as well as the abrasion and scratch resistance of their bodies. The Rovivon A5 is definitely looking worse for wear and I did find a small hole in the side of the light, but much to my surprise, it is still fully operational, which is really impressive. The Rovivon is definitely looking better, and it handled the drive over like a champ, and is fully operational, and looks to be in as good a condition as before the drive over. The Olight i1R2 Pro has a tiny bit of scratching on the knurling on the tube, but this one is completely operational. The Phoenix E03R also held up really well, 
which did surprise me and after all these tests we had no issues and the light is fully functional. The Lumintop Frog has a similar body to the Olight and it basically appears to be brand new and is fully operational and overall this more traditional aluminum body cylinder design is probably the toughest out there and least prone to failure no matter what happens to the light. The Nightcore TIPSE is back in business and the body held up great to the drive over and it's good to see that the light is working and fully operational and the only issues I had with this one were due to the moisture related tests but after giving it some time to dry out it was able to bounce back to its full capabilities. The Night Cortiki unfortunately did not do too well and although the body is intact the light is no longer responsive so unfortunately this one is done but it did hold up well in the other tests so as long as you aren't too rough on this light it will probably hold up well for you. Finally we have the Night Core Tiny 2 and while the primary functions of this light do still work, unfortunately the display screen cracked and that no longer turns on when it's supposed to, but the most important thing here is that the light still turns on and off and you can cycle through the different modes and overall this light did hold up well in the other tests. Anyways, this video was a lot of fun to make and I wanna thank you guys for watching and if you enjoyed it, be sure to smash the like button and comment down below. And if you wanna pick up any of these lights, there's links down in the description and if you wanna learn more about these lights, I've got videos on them which I'll link to down in the description below.